So I'm here today on the UVM campus to visit with the students who are working in solidarity to raise awareness of the UVM staff contract negotiations with the UVM administration. Uh, I've stood with the staff for years, both in their organizing efforts to form a union, as well as now supporting them in their efforts to get a fair contract and get some raises because they haven't had raises, many of them in years. Uh, we're all experiencing increased costs, whether it's gasoline, food, other basic needs as we see inflation. Um, but even before this inflation hit, um, they hadn't had seen raises in a long time. And many people are struggling to live in Chittenden County on the kinds of wages that they're paid. Well, a lot of times when you see rallies, sometimes they're called protests, they could be called either. Um, it's to show that there's public support that, um, you know, as someone like me, I used to be in elected office in the legislature and then as lieutenant governor of Vermont. And I often encourage people to come out and show their support, whether it's for policy in Montpelier or whether it's for workers in negotiation uh, for their pay and benefits and rights. Um, and oftentimes when negotiations like this happen and nobody shows up, nobody really knows what's going on. And the folks at the top tend to have more of the power. When, when the public or supporters come out, it helps bring into focus and into visibility for people who are just sort of getting through their day that there's something going on. And whether it's around workers' rights and pay or benefits, whether it's around um, environmental issues, climate issues, water quality, whether it's about criminal justice reform, as a formerly elected official, I can tell you that when the public gets more involved and shows what they generally think then and where they support, then that makes most elected people consider that perspective more. Um, because you know when people are paying attention, they're also going to remember what's going on when it comes election time. And that's not necessarily taken as a threat in any way, at least never was by me. To me, what it was about was saying, great, now I have a better sense of what people are interested in. And when you're a public servant and you're supposed to represent people, it helps to have an idea, um, not just from who you see at your coffee shop or at the grocery store that you frequent, but also people that you don't always see because you're supposed to represent everybody. Um, do you have any specific updates related to this situation? I don't really. I just showed up about 20 minutes ago to visit with the folks that are camping out. I hear there was an update, but some of it is being kept, I guess, close to the vest. So, um, you know, that's kind of where I, what I'm hearing right now. I've heard mostly that the negotiations have um, maybe not moved very far, uh, which is unfortunate. So there's a couple things that, that unions offer. Um, you know, most everyday people are just trying to do their job. And, you know, once in a while in a smaller workplace, I've sometimes negotiated with a boss for a little bit of pay here or there, or they talk to their boss every year. But usually in larger workplaces, um, they almost never see the, the top dog. Um, and in negotiations where you've got something like this situation with a university with lawyers and people that have dealt with sort of every situation under the, under the stars, and then you've got the everyday worker who's just showing up to work, trying to do their job every day, go home and juggle all the things they've got to juggle at home, they're at an incredible disadvantage. And so what unions do is they can help with some of those knowledge sets for negotiations. They can help with knowledge sets of how to get people supportive and how to change the dialogue that's happening inside by what's happening outside, you know, whether it's this or the rally last week and the rally the week before and the rally next week. So unions have roles both in as an advisor and as a, a strategic set of thinking individuals, as well as um, helping the negotiators, because typically the negotiators are not actually the, the union staff. The negotiators are the stewards of, of the union, the workers who have risen to the top as leaders. And so they can help advise them as well. What, what brought you here today? Well, I have often come out to stand with uh, working people who are struggling for modest increases to make ends meet. Um, I've stood with teachers when they've been organizing and occasionally going on strike. I have stood with uh, electric line workers and folks with the Communication Workers of America with um, uh, Fairpoint a number of years ago. And, and here it's the same thing. The people that are doing a lot of the behind scenes work, 
uh, the, the staff who, you know, in some cases do a lot of the paperwork of processing student forms and getting students enrolled or um, entering data, uh, they're usually less visible uh, and less well compensated than, um, you know, professors or administrators. And there's also a, a professorial union here as well. Um, and it's often about negotiations between uh, what's, the, what's the pay scale difference from the very top to the bottom. Um, and I've, you know, I heard about this through social media. Um, I pay attention to what's going on. A lot of good union organizing and environmental activism and civil rights and criminal justice reform are, are doing a lot of organizing online and I pay attention so I can come out and stand in solidarity. Yeah, so we are out here to express our solidarity with UVM Staff United and their ongoing contract negotiations with um, UVM administration. Um, we feel as though the student experience is diminished when staff don't have what they need to survive and thrive on a regular basis and that um, what a UVM administration is currently doing to staff in terms of um, not paying them a livable wage um, and not giving them um, the um, cost of life increases that they need in order to continue living in Burlington is insane and inhumane at the richest university in the state of Vermont. Um, and so, you know, there's no reason why 30% of UVM staff should be um, using food pantries on a regular basis. There's no reason why staff members should be having their electricity shut off. There's no reason why staff should be kicked out of their home. Um, we're losing a lot of really great staff members every year um, because they keep leaving because, you know, UVM is not paying them a competitive wage. Um, they can no longer afford to, you know, stay in a, a Burlington real estate market that continues to get more outrageously overpriced for everybody. Um, you know, but the working class people who support this university feel that pain the most. And so, you know, we are out here to express our solidarity um, with those staff to let um, the administration know that, um, you know, we stand with them and that um, they can't divide us and that, you know, um, you know, st the student body is like with the staff in their fight and that it can't just go away easily the way the administration wants it to. Yeah, so there's like, I have been personally um, with like a lot of my comrades, you know, involved in several of the struggles um, for working people um, at UVM over the years. You know, I was um, deeply involved in the anti cast cuts campaign. And so, you know, um, solidarity is crucial. Um, and, you know, they really can't be compared to each other because each, you know, group, each union has its own fight, its own struggle, um, you know, but, um, you know, it, it, it hurts the same, you know, when like any piece of our community is missing, when any piece of our community is left out, you know, we're left with an incomplete puzzle, you know, and so um, it feels the same way. I feel the same sort of sense of urgency about, you know, uh, majors being cut, professors being laid off, you know. Um, I like I got to talk very um, in depth with several of the professors who got laid off in the last round of cast cuts and you know the grief that they feel is the same grief that staff members feel here um, having to leave their jobs not because they're fired but because if they don't they won't be able to feed their families anymore um, and you know that's the same sense of human suffering of um, greed of administrative corruption um, anywhere um, yeah so f thank you Sophie um, yeah So the benefits are like a couple things, you know. So first of all, um, UVM is having a really hard time staffing all of the positions that it needs to. And so the workers that are left over here um, are forced to work more and more and take on more responsibilities um, for the same level of pay. Um, and so when you have a workforce that's well paid, um, that's doing the job that only it's supposed to be doing, um, that increases the quality of work that they're able to put in um, and you know from a student perspective we can easily see you know the quality of the services that we have been receiving 
over the last several years decline um, across the board. And that's because, you know, there aren't enough staff to do these jobs and people aren't coming to work here because it's not an attractive place to work, you know, and we're having a really hard time recruiting and uh, maintaining qualified candidates for these positions, people who, you know, really want to dedicate their lives to, you know, helping students. And so, you know, if we were to get a fair contract, if staff were able to get a fair shake, not only would it be able to take an immense burden off the staff that we have, but allow us to continue to recruit, continue to diversify. You know, there's a really big problem with um, staff of color um, leaving um, UVM because they're not feeling supported enough. Um, and that in turn affects the way that students of color on campus um, are able to experience their day to day lives. And so, you know, a win for staff in this, a, a greater, you know, um, focus on working class people on campus, you know, will just have all around benefits that you could feel um, from every corner, from students, from staff, from faculty. Um, everything works better when people are being treated with the respect that they deserve. You know, UVM Staff United is a new union. Um, you know, I think it came around about a year ago. Um, you know, and winning that vote was really tough because for decades, for years, you know, um, UVM staff have been trying to form a union. Um, you know, there was large protests back in 2007, back in 2012. And so this is a long time coming. And, you know, it's the culmination of decades of work by, you know, numerous activists, some of whom have been fired um, for their role in um, union organizing. And so, you know, the union has been such an incredible force on campus. Um, you know, the community support and um, the level of sort of engagement that the staff union has given to, you know, student concerns and to, you know, build bridges with us is phenomenal. You know, and I feel that like um, the staff union has done a really good job of, you know, building cross community connections and strengthening the UVM community as a whole. Um, and obviously they're leading the fight in the bargaining negotiations and, you know, even the right to collectively bargain for a contract, you know, which is what they're doing right now is, you know, fought and earned by the people who formed that union. And so, you know, we're really thankful to them. And, you know, hopefully we can get um, that second wind because, you know, forming the union is only the first piece of the puzzle. And then winning that fair contract is the second piece. And so, you know, we just got to get those two together. Yeah. I mean, there's a long history at UVM of campus activism and campus activism in favor of working class people on campus. Um, and a long history of, you know, constructing tent cities or shanty towns. And so, you know, we're really drawing back to like a long history at UVM that's really cultivated by people, you know, like the apartheid divestment protests, um, the minority protests of the early 90s. And, you know, we want to thank those um, forerunners for, you know, um, building that culture, giving us that history to learn and work off of um, and to tell, you know, UVM administration that, you know, we're not going to take it anymore. You know, this is a make or break moment. You know, if you fail, if UVM administration fails to, you know, deliver staff a good contract, then, you know, we're going to see a mass exodus of talent from the university and we're going to see significant problems in running um, the university next fall. Um, as we're facing significant problems now, um, but they're only going to multiply. And so, you know, I beg UVM, I beg you, you know, I don't, I don't say, you know, I say this very, very like strongly, you know, like I beg UVM to, you know, deliver on these benefits and to, you know, bargain in good faith because if they don't, um, you know, there will be strong repercussions across the community. And I love UVM, you know, I've spent years of my life here, you know, fighting, trying to make this a good, equitable place for everybody. Um, and, you know, it just needs to happen, you know, like there needs to be a change. Like it just, we can't keep going on like this, you know. And I'm here because just how they treat the staff is fucking awful. They are paying them basically pennies just so Suresh can take home a fat paycheck and his other ghouls in the admin and just higher ups in general while the staff has to work multiple jobs.
Uh, I was just in, so I was in a lot of the groups who had people who were planning it and they're just reminding us about it. And I was super excited to like be out and doing something like have, have something meaningful to do instead of just talking about making a change, actually like doing something that might be fighting for it. Uh, personally, I want the staff to be afraid. I want them to know, I don't know if I'm staying at this school. A lot of the reasons is because of the school admin's shitty policies that are not friendly towards students, not friendly towards staff, not friendly towards people in my major, people in other majors. So I hope they know that there's, the, there's more on the line than they think. There's a lot of people who don't want to stay here because of what they've been doing, how they've actively been ruining the experience for us. So I hope they're afraid. As for like everybody else's, I think it's just also to show solidarity, show that people are here to support the staff, that it's not this issue that people have been making it where it's like the staff against the students because oh, if the staff get a livable wage and the students will have to pay more. Like, no, there's a million places we can get that money from. They are. They keep saying we're poor. They, they keep saying that we're going over budget, that we don't have the money. We have the money. They're fucking liars. Um. Uh, well, really, they could gain a staff who's able to put their full energy into the work they do here. They can gain people who are really passionate about this, really energized to come here, to be able to, you know, work with students, do their job, because they don't have to worry about taking up a second job filling up their time with that, like having all their energy sapped from them by the fact that they're having to do 80 hour work weeks. They, like just human rights in general are a gain. No matter who it is, human rights are always at the top of that and that includes people being able to just have the necessities, necessities for survival, food, water, shelter, and school's not and the school's not paying enough for a lot of people to afford that. Um, what do you think the role of the union is in the negotiations? I think the role of the union is to make sure there's an organized force that is willing to stand up against the stand up against the school against the higher ups that are willing to say that we're here as a collective bargaining unit. We're here to make sure that nobody in the nobody in the staff is getting left out. That we're all that that essentially all the workers here are here to fight for each other. Okay, uh, to UVM, Suresh, your rat fucker. I hope you resign, you piece of shit. I, and just pay your employees, you fucking bastard. I'm just hanging out here, sleeping overnight, waking up in the morning. So why are you here? Why are you at the I mean, I think the staff deserve to be paid a livable wage. I'm friends with a lot of staff and, you know, here to support my friends and the community on campus. And, yeah. Uh, I'd like the administration to feel some pressure on them because, I mean, staff are definitely feeling the pressure of 
you know, I'm sure you've heard the statistics in the past few interviews, but like a third of staff, food insecure, 500 staff being paid below a livable wage. And that's a livable wage is only accounts for if you don't have kids. So you need above a livable wage if you want to support your children with that job. And also rent crisis in Burlington at large been going up steadily. So it's practically impossible to live here. I know a lot of plenty of faculty and staff have to live outside of Burlington and it's a ridiculous commute. Gas prices are going up and I'm going to say right now that's not because of Ukraine. It's because the oil companies know they can milk us out of as much gas as possible. So generally things are getting harder and harder to live and people already weren't able to live off the you know, salaries that they were being paid before. Also staff are working overtime without pay and the pandemic's made things a lot harder. There's a bunch of different, uh, like maintenance has about 20 open positions right now. Uh, housekeeping has 26 open positions because no one wants to take those jobs because it's ridiculous hours for terrible pay, you know? So anything, the thing I like to get out of this protest is all the staff to get a livable wage and to see some real change on campus. Think about it. Okay. Oh, the, the union are the ones negotiating, if I'm correct. What do you mean, the role? I'm kind of confused by that question. I think the role of the union is to represent the interests of all the staff and make sure that every single member of that staff leads with a fair fucking contract. And, you know, if there's no union, it's pretty much like the university was trying to take advantage of staff because they knew they didn't have a union. They, I think they got the union last year. Um, and... The university was putting a lot of shit in place while they didn't have a union because they knew that without a union, there was no way for them to fight for benefits as a group. So I know some specific people were going and like fighting their own individual fights, but can't fight a collective fight without uniting, you know? You, you finished thinking about your question that you had before? Okay. Well, I've been here a couple of days, but what yeah, brought me to the to the this encampment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, just hearing stories from the staff. I mean, the staff have been doing a push for this for a minute now. Uh, not for this encampment, but to get fair contracts. And I've been hearing about it all semester. And, you know, hearing their stories and realizing that, you know, as students we have the capability to make change everyone always says you know the youth are the ones who have the most power because people listen to what we have to say because once you're an adult you're just another voter i'm technically just another voter right now but you know i think as youth and as students we make up probably the majority of the population of this campus and our voices should hold more weight on campus and i wanted to show my solidarity with staff so i'm out here You got it. I'm, uh, what's your question, Avery? To UVM, uh, the administration? Um, I'm going to look into the camera. So, pay the staff a fair contract. Uh, you have the money to do so. You're corrupt. You run this campus like a business. Um, you lie consistently. We know that you lie. Um, you're going to be held accountable whether you like it or not. And 
uh don't forget that you're people just like us and it goes both ways you come out here try to humanize yourselves to us but yeah, it doesn't seem like you're acting a humans acting like humans to the majority of the people you employ so you know shape up or you know prepare to face consequences